So here we are in Inventor 2016, and we're going to have a quick look at the new 3D print environment. Uh, how do I access it? If you go to Environments, you'll notice that we have a 3D print icon here. Click that, and that'll open up this environment. It's going to transfer our model into the environment. It's important to recognize that this environment is actually separate from the design environment. So the changes that we make here won't, ref won't be reflected in the CAD design environment. So one of the first things you'll notice is we have this white wireframe box that basically represents the print envelope of our default printer. In this case, we've, our default printer is the Spark Ember printer. But you can choose any number of printers that come with the package, but also you'll note that you've got the option of being able to customize and create your own, set a favorite, and then assign a default. Let's just use the Spark Ember printer as our default um, printer in this case. And, uh, and let's go through the process of now setting up a, a typical 3D print. So what we can do here is you'll notice that the part actually is just located about the center of the print envelope. What we really wanna do though, is shift the part around and locate it based on our preferences. We might decide that we don't actually wanna print it in this orientation, we wanna change the orientation, we wanna move the position of the part around the print bed. So we have a number of tools that help work with data in this way. The first is our set orientation tool. So if I click set orientation, I can simply choose a face and the part will be reorientated in the position based on my selection. You note that it's still positioned about the center of the print bed and that poses an issue in this case. So what we can do is just reposition it. So if I go set position and choose say the front and the side planes of our print envelope, you'll see that we've repositioned the print article. In this case, we can add some clearance. Maybe we wanna have some tolerance to make sure that we're not gonna cause any issues with our print. And we'll look from the top of our part and notice that it's been positioned from the front and the side plane of our print envelope. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this position is the part actually extends beyond the boundary of the print envelope. So what we can do is maybe look at shrinking the part. We could use our direct edit tools to shrink the part, or we can partition the part and segregate it into multiple sections to then be reassembled after printing. So the way that we can do this is using what we call the partition tool. And thankfully this is basically all automated for us. So I click on the partition tool and I can choose the plane that I wanna use. In this case, we use the back plane of our printer and that will then go and segregate the bodies into two sections. Another thing it'll do is it'll enable us to insert alignment aids for when we go and reassemble the parts. So in this case, what I'll do is add some alignment aids. I'm gonna use a one mil depth, a one mil diameter, and five degrees of draft. Let's just reorientate so we're positioned, add some points. We'll click one on the left, One on the right. Go okay. And if we give it a moment, you'll actually find that what it's doing is it's segregating the body into multiple bodies. And it's adding features that'll enable us to reassemble and realign these parts once we've printed them. So you'll see here, it's split the bodies. You'll also notice in the solid bodies folder that we have two bodies. If we change the visibility of the main body, you'll notice that our smaller body has a couple of pins and our main body will have holes in it. And we'll see that in a moment, but let's just turn that back on and position this second piece back into the print envelope. Now, the way that we do that is basically using the same tools and techniques as we did earlier. So we'll go set orientation. In this case, we've got to choose the body because there's more than one bodies. Choose the face that we want to use as our uh, alignment aid for orientation and go okay. Let's change the position in this case, choosing the body and say the side wall. Again, we'll add some clearance, go okay. And we now have that in position. So you'll now see that we've got those pins, we've got the body aligned, we've got some holes in the main body. If I go from the top and have a quick look down, you'll see that everything's within inside the boundaries of the print bed. Uh, so very quickly and easily, we've been able to set up uh, our bodies. Now, the, the last stage of, of uh, finalizing before we then send out to print is to adjust our settings. Now, one way of doing this is to turn on our 
mesh display and mesh edges. And you can see here it's depicting the, the print quality of our part that we can expect once we've printed the objects using our 3D printer. To adjust this, we can go into our print options. We've got a number of different options that we can adjust, units, the format, the resolution. We can manually adjust these. We can turn on or off, export colors, depending upon the default printer that we're using. And once we go out of here, you'll see that it's adjusting the quality of our print. Once we're happy with all of this, we can then export to STL, bring it into our printer, print our 3D objects. Now, one last thing before we go is to remember that all of the changes that are taking place inside this 3D print environment aren't being transferred back to our original design. So if I exit the 3D print environment, you'll see here that our original model hasn't been divided into two bodies, okay? Um, to go back into our 3D print environment, just click 3D print. So there you have it, the new 3D print environment inside Inventor 2016.